Now that we've seen how to create an HTML form, we need to start populating it with form fields. That way we can actually use it. So let's go ahead and look at doing that real quick. So just to kind of see what we're going to do and how we're going to do it, I'm going to create a form that's going to fill out some information for a workplace. And so we're going to ask kind of work related questions here. And so the first thing we need to ask is the person's name. So I'm going to use the input tag and the input tag you're going to find is used all the time in forms because it has a great amount of flexibility. So I'm simply going to say input. I'm going to give it a type of text. I'm going to specify a name. And I'm going to specify an ID. Now, so far, this looks pretty straightforward. And if I save this and come back here and reload, I now have a form field that is for my name. Now, if you look at this, you're probably going, how do I know that's for my name? And what's with those attributes that she put in? Well, let's talk about all that real quick. Okay, so when I have an input, you saw I had a lot of different types of input. And text is probably one of your most common ones that you're going to see. So that's what I have here. And by default, if you don't specify anything, text is what you're going to get. Now, I like to always specify my input type simply because there are so many of them. I want to remove any hint of potential doubt. The name is what will be sent to the form processor. So when I send information to a form, I send it as the name so I know what form field is being filled out and a value, and I put that in there. And so you can see the full name there listed, and that tells me what the form field name is. However, when I process something on a client side script, I'm going to prefer to use the ID. It's a whole lot easier and faster. And so I give an ID. Now, a lot of times these will be the same, but sometimes they will be different, especially if I have multiple forms on a page. So if I have multiple forms on a page, I might have the same form fields in a couple of them that are named the same. So my IDs have to be unique. Now, the other problem I have, of course, is I could not tell what that form field was for. If I switch back to my HTML real quick, you'll notice that it's just a box. And I have a feeling I'm supposed to put something in it, but I don't know what. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a label tag. And I have a, two different ways of using a label tag. So I'm going to specify label. And I'm going to put the closing label out on the other side of my input tag. And now when I reload, you can see it gives me a label that lets me know what is this information. Now, this is one way of doing it. I usually don't prefer this method. What I usually prefer is to have my label separate like that. I'll say something like four. And my four attribute says, well, what is this label attached to? Well, it's going to be for full name. And whatever my ID is on my input tag or any form field is what I'm going to put in a form. Now, if I reload this, you're going to notice it does the exact same thing, which is really nice for me. However, it also gives me a couple of added features. So I can style my label entirely separate from my form fields, and that's great. My next example is I'm going to use a label once again for, and my next one is going to be a password. And so my input, I'm going to say input type, 
and it's going to be password. Name is going to equal password. And ID is also going to equal password. If I reload my HTML page, you're going to notice that my full name and password are on the same line. Because I changed the type to password, if I type things in, your notice is going to show the little dots instead of the characters. Whereas if I come over a full name, because I use text, it's going to show my letters as I write them, in my case, my name. So this is a really simple methodology for me to make sure I hide things on the client side. This way, once again, if I have someone standing kind of over my shoulder, they're not going to see the password. And anytime we have a password and certain other fields, we will probably want to use a password type to hide them. And this could be things like credit cards or account IDs, passwords, etc. What happens if there's nothing in here or if I want to provide some additional information? Well, I have a couple other attributes I could use. So for example, I could say placeholder. And a placeholder is designed to show something in that field itself. And that's a great idea. So here I'm going to give them a little hint. Don't use their domain password. You might say, well, what would that do? Well, you'll notice here as placeholder text, it actually shows that text. Now, as soon as I start typing, it goes away. So if I want to show or give a little hint, I could do that. And if you've ever seen maybe a login form and it's a small form up at the top of the page and it's just a couple of boxes and it says username and password, but it's inside the box, they're using the placeholder attribute. And that's a whole lot better than using the value attribute because I can also come in and say value and we'll say Bob as an example, but no said it's not grayed out. That's the actual value. So if I don't put something in, Bob is what's going to transmit. If I don't put something in password, nothing transmit. And that's the difference between using a preformed well, value versus a placeholder. And there's lots of times I will want to use value and I have used value as a web designer. So if I was pulling in information I wanted to show what it was before you submit and give you a chance to double check it. I put the information in value. Let's say you filled out information in a form before. Maybe it's a checkout form. Well, I'll go ahead and put things like your address and maybe your previous credit card you used in the value. And then all you have to do is submit it. Uh, that way it just makes it faster and easier for you. So it just depends upon how are we using this? Are we providing a hint? Are we wanting this to be a value that's going to be potentially submitted to us? Or is it just additional information? And so whether you use value or placeholder is real important. Let me give you another example. And this is going to be for something called work here. And I don't have to have my input on the same line as label. So just to demonstrate that, I'm going to put this on a separate line. And I'm going to use a different type of type. And so I just want to go over these real quick. The most common that you're going to use is text. But there are some others that you can use. The ones that I want to focus on right now is going to be a number. But something you may not even notice is these pop-up list is actually a scrollable. So there's more of them. So I have tell, which is for telephone. I have range, which gives me a range of numbers, month and number, and just a variety of different things that I can pick. I'm going to go ahead and pick number and we'll see how it changes in our browser real quick. So this is going to be type number, name, is going to be work here.
And when I use number, I get a couple other attributes that become available to me. One is min, and this is the smallest number it could be. So I'll say zero. And I'll do max, which I'll put in 20. When I reload this and you look at it, it goes, well, I don't see any big difference. It's, you know, it's three. But if I put my mouse cursor over it, you'll notice I have a little up and down arrows. And this allows me to move. And notice that when I hit the bottom number, it doesn't go to, to negative numbers. It goes to zero. That's why it says my min. If I try to type in some value, it's going to let me type it initially. But if I try to adjust it, it's going to jump me to my max. So that min and max is going to help limit that. But also, if I try to type in letters, notice it won't accept them. It will only accept numbers. And so that's just an example of how we can use some of the other types. And like I said, there's a lot of different types in there that you can use. They're designed to help make sure a person fills out the correct type of information. It used to be you only had text and uh, password and, and a couple other ones, and you really couldn't control what the user was typing in. This is making sure we get good information. So I'm going to put in 12. We'll assume it's years. That's a whole different story. Now, just to look at these other types real quick. Some ones that you might see fairly often, and we'll look at in the future, are going to be things like checkbox and radio. That's going to be things that we're going to look at later. Uh, you have a color, which will bring up a color picker uh, that you can choose a favorite color type thing. Date and time, which is going to bring up a calendar type of event. Email, will make sure that emails are formatted correctly. File lets you select a file on your local machine that you're going to upload. So if you think about things like a social media site, uh, now they will sometimes do this in a variety of ways that are sometimes hidden. You use a lot of semi-complicated scripting on the back end. We're not going to worry about that. But you can make a very simple thing. And you've probably seen this if you've ever had to apply for a job online. There's a thing, you know, select here to upload your resume. Hidden will not be seen and does not need a label. Uh, and you might say, well, why would we use this? Well, maybe we're pulling information from multiple form fields and we need to keep it from previous screens. Uh, maybe we'll have something that's part of an anti-spam thing. Uh, I wrote a thing several years ago now that what it did is it looked to see how long did you spend on the form. And if you didn't spend a long time on the form and there was a calculation method that was used in that, then it would set, it would throw it out as a potential spam field. And so we've done things like that before. You've already seen things like numbers and password, but there's a wide range of other types that you can come in here and pick through. We'll look at some of these, like I said, in the future, but we're not going to spend too much time on them because they might be things that you don't particularly need to know in everyday use.